breaking the wall of drug cartel analysis. How statistical modeling can help understand cartel violence. Rafael Prieto Curiel, Complexity Science Hub. On November 9th, 1989, I was just a baby in a country far more peaceful than it is now. Thank you so much. And unfortunately, it is true. Mexico is today one of the most violent countries in the world. Unfortunately, just today, we're going to have 100 homicides in the country, and that's if we're lucky. Most of the Saturdays, actually, we are unlucky, and we actually have more than 100 homicides in just a single day. And unfortunately, this is the trend that we have now in Mexico. A few years ago, we had only like 50 homicides every Saturday, and we celebrated those 50 homicides. But now it's 100, and it's increasing, and it has increased for the past 15 years. It's terrible, and if you go to Mexico, you will see violent events like this, cities destroyed, beaches, because obviously Mexico is famous for its beautiful beaches, right? But you will see in almost every town in Mexico that this is the current situation. This is not only in Mexico, actually, Latin America, the whole, is becoming super violent. Just to give you the context, Latin America has 8% of the world's population. We have 32% of the global homicide. This is the issue. Now Latin America is becoming extremely violent, and there is one reason, and that is cartels. I'm going to talk about cartels today. And please, when I talk about cartels, imagine something like this. It's an army structure that has drones, power, they are in social media, they have tanks, they actually threaten the government, they threaten elections. We are fighting this enemy, right? So when, it, when I talk about cartels, imagine this type of structure. Obviously, it's in Latin America, the impact is huge, but the impact is huge also in the US and in other parts of the world. You see now the impact is that we have 100 homicides in Mexico every day, but there are 300 deaths due to drug overdose in the US every single day. And both are actually linked to the same problem that is cartels, organized crime, right? There is something that for me puzzles me a lot about cartels, and that's a bit how this research project started, that if you think about it, we are actually trying to fight cartels. We try it. That means if you think that this is the structure of a cartel, and we keep arresting individuals, then from one week to the next one, there would be less members of a cartel, right? Because we arrested them. And if we keep arresting people, and then they keep getting murdered, because obviously you see, you turn on the news in Mexico, and there are cartels fighting with, with each other. So you would expect that if they get arrested, and they get killed, then the week after, the problem is slightly smaller, no? And then and another week, we arrest them, we kill them, and then eventually the problem should be solved, right? I know it sounds funny, but after 15 years, Imagine a company that for 15 years is fighting this, losing members due to arrests, losing members because they are killing each other and still prevails. Imagine any company that manages to do this. And that's why I started thinking, there is something missing. There has to be something that we are not understanding here. And this is recruitment. The issue with recruitment is that these cartels, these army-like structures are managing to compensate all those losses, all the effect, you keep arresting people, you know, they keep recruiting, and it doesn't matter. So this is one of the issues. We keep recruiting people, and eventually the cartel is just as big. So I started wondering this, and let me tell you a bit why this, right? So I'm from Mexico, as you can tell from the Latino sexy accent, <laughs> and I actually worked uh, for a few years in the police department. So I'm convinced that one of the most powerful tools that we have for fighting cartels and violence and crime is mathematics. And I will be super happy if I convince you of that. So I used to work in the police department in Mexico City, and you will see a couple of photos of me working in the police department, and it was super exciting. This is me with my team, some of us civilians, some of us police officers. This is actually my last day in the police department, and you can tell that I'm super tall, right? <laughs> especially in Mexico, like, I'm not even standing in a platform and anything, I'm just that tall. And the people on the left, 
uh, the police officers, we used to monitor cameras with people on the right. The civilians thinking on how to do this better. Actually, this is a picture of the center I used to work with. That's my office, somewhere in that floor. And it was super exciting to be there in my office trying to monitor more than 70,000 cameras trying to understand where is the next crime going to happen. And that's what I did, but with equations. That's what a mathematician does, right? So I'm, how do you complain, how do you put together, how do you combine mathematics and cartels? So that is what I will try to convince you, right? Let's think of a cartel. If it changes in size, it's because it did something, right? So I'm going to show you how I think of as a mathematician. I think of a cartel that has some members one week, and then the week after, it's going to have a different number, maybe because it got arrested. So I put arrested and I put a minus sign because it got arrested, right? Then some of them got killed, so again, a minus sign because some of the members got killed. Then some of the people get retirement, so they get out of the cartel. Also minus because they got out of the cartel. And then finally, because they recruited, right? So there are four elements. The size of a cartel changes from one week to the next one. Three negatives, killed, arrested, or retirement, and one positive that is recruitment. This is the way a mathematician thinks, only we put it with equations. So instead of this, it looks something like this. The size of a cartel changes, and it's an equation. The four terms are ordered. You see the minus, minus, and pluses. But it's just telling you the size of a cartel changes, and it's just a beautiful, gorgeous differential equation, right? I have a tattoo on that, actually. No, just kidding. But we have actually an equation like this formed for every single cartel in Mexico. And we have 150 of those cartels. So we have 150 of those equations. If you, if you didn't got the equation, no worries. Basically, just that idea. The size of a cartel changes because we arrest them, they get killed, they retire, but they compensate with recruitment, right? It looks something like this, actually. When we see the, ca the active cartels fighting and combating with each other, well, that's sort of the equations that we get, because they are 150 equations, it's tricky to solve, they are coupled, they are complicated, but now with a computer, we can do it. So I clicked, and six million later simulations, we have a solution for what's the size of a cartel. The equations, for me, are exciting, but the results, let me show you what we got. First is cartels, they need to have roughly 175,000 members. They cannot be much smaller because they would have collapsed. They cannot be much bigger because they would have grown so fast. So they have to be roughly 175,000 members, which means roughly, just to put it into context, the fifth largest employer in the country, perfect, but it's also bigger than all the army that we have for fighting this insecurity is almost the same size as the prison population that we have in the country. So that's roughly the animal that we're fighting, right? 175,000 cartel members. And it's actually the number one recruiter in the country. So the one that is providing more new jobs for people, right? And I say that recruitment is the secret of the success of a cartel. And let me show you why. On the left-hand side, I'm going to show you a cartel with a small recruitment. If it had a small recruitment, then they try and they recruit some individuals, right? But then you come with your police, and with your police, eventually, you dismantle this cartel, and you arrest, and you, you get rid of these individuals. So even if they try to compensate and they recruit some of these individuals, eventually, you will manage to disappear and dismantle every single cartel if the recruitment is sufficiently small, right? And that's why Germany doesn't have cartels. That's why Austria doesn't have cartels, because their recruitment pool is small. However, on the, on the, left -hand, on the right hand side, sorry, we have a country like Mexico with a large recruitment. When you have a large recruitment, yeah, you can arrest individuals and you can keep putting people into prison and more and more, and that's what we do. Because we are actually trying, I promise you, from the police department, we did it. Every single week we are arresting hundreds of people, but still, because they recruit, the impact is zero. You think that you're doing something by arresting individuals, but the problem is that one week later, they will recruit the same number of people that you arrested. So the cartel has 100 members. You arrest 10, thinking that you're doing something, but they recruit 10. 
So we are in the same position the week after. Actually, with this principle, I asked the mathematical model, because that's the power of mathematics, right? We asked the model, what happens if I change something? So let me show you the results. I stand from 10 years ago up until today, what has happened? And this is the tragedy of Latin America. This is how I started telling you Mexico has gotten super violent. This is it. From 56 murders from cartel to cartels to 100 today, right? Well, how is it going to look like in the next five years? I just take the model, push the time, and see the result, right? And guess what? This is what it's going to look like. If we keep doing exactly the same, if, we, I, if I don't change any of the parameters of the model, this is how Latin America is going to look like in the next five years. Let's try something different. Let's double the arrests. And the result is that one. OK, you do have an impact. You go from 100 murders to 108, but you're not decreasing. So it's going to look even more violent than in those today. Let's change other parameters. One parameter is let's reduce the recruitment. Well, if you reduce the recruitment a bit, then you actually have an impact. If you manage magically, because mathematics allows you to, reduce the recruitment to zero, I can just put in the equation what happens if recruitment was zero. Well, actually then, Mexico would be less violent in five years than it was in 2012. Eh? Still, in this scenario, Mexico would be more violent in five years than any country in Europe. So actually, you know, I'm showing you a, a very magical solution that is, let's make recruitment equal to zero. And even then, in five years, we're going to be more violent. So that's tricky, right? I know that I have bad solutions, and it's tricky to come with bad news to, to the stage and show you how to do it. But there are many things to do. Yes, it's inequality. Yes, it's poverty. Yes, it's the conditions of Mexico. But it's also this. For I, I, I find it shocking that somebody can turn on their Netflix and see a hero being portrayed like this guy. Then go to the teenager and tell them, hey, the cartel is bad. This is the challenge that we're facing, right? So something interesting is that, obviously, after I came with the idea that it is recruitment, it is a cartel, I started doing a lot of media interviews, swiping afterwards in a lot of press, in a lot of the media, talking to people, talking to actually news journalists that want to at least spread the word. Yes, we need to do something. This is a catastrophe. In Latin America, this is the tricky part. Even actually, the president of Mexico discussed my research. That's me on Twitter, by the way. And he discussed my, my research for hours, saying like, yeah, this is something to do with cartels. This is something to do with recruitment and blah, blah, blah. But I hope, at least with these few minutes that I have, that I show you two beautiful things. First, mathematics, at least, is a super powerful tool. It's one of those gorgeous tools. First, to be the first person from Mexico to be called the science breakthrough of the year. Thank you so much. <laughs> Not only the first person from Mexico, actually the first person from Latin America to be called the science breakthrough of the year. So that's thanks to mathematics, right? That's beautiful. Also, I hope I convince you, although the equation is tricky maybe to understand that the concept is there, that what we should focus on is in the recruitment of cartels, right? So I hope I convince you that mathematics is the tool for breaking the wall of drug cartels. And with that, I have to say thank you so much. <laughs>